So who's been on TikTok and seen this video right here? <laughs> or what about this one right here? <laughs> so that truck's my buddy Taylor King's truck, and that's one of the thousands of Gen 5 trucks that I've tuned. Now his is a little bit better burnout than a lot of them. That one is a Whipple Rods Pistons Cam 6.2. Stock ADL 90 though, but LT4 fuel system E85. I mean, the truck's pretty rowdy. But you guys have been asking about me doing a Gen 5 burnout video, and I've kind of held tight on this information because this stuff is just really not out there. But I think it's time. So let's go ahead on and jump in this video. <laughs> We're going to start off with a 2015 Chevy Silverado 536085. I feel like this is the most common file that we're going to come run across, or at least the most common that I run across. This is going to match up pretty much any of your 6L80 trucks. The 8L90 trucks will be a little bit different on driver demand stuff, but for the most part, they're all going to be the same. So just like our Gen 4 video, we're going to jump straight into brake torque management. So for that, we're going to go to engine, we're going to go to torque management, we're going to go to general, and we've got brake torque management right here. So just like the other ones, this disable by TCS is enabled, which means that if you disable traction control, the traction control button is going to disable the brake torque management. But there is a catch, there's a limit. So this limit right here, now these numbers may look high, but this is actually axle torque. So right now we've got an axle torque limit of 2788 foot pounds. We can go ahead on and max this out or basically come close to maxing it out. So we can just type in 96671, so 96,671 foot pounds of torque. It equals and we'll close that out the next one's going to be your multiplier for vehicle speed so i've had a lot of guys where they would do go to do burnouts and say they get up in uh, second or third gear and the truck would just kind of lay over that's in this multi right here so you'll see this is accelerator pedal position versus vehicle speed so we can just take this and because it's a multiplier we can just make it one so the next one that we're going to do is port management right here. Normally I wouldn't max these out, but for whatever reason, GM actually maxed these out in the Corvettes. So we'll just go ahead on and follow suit and do what they do. So we can just type in 96671 and I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna tab down and paste and we're just gonna roll all the way through it, like all the way down. All right, so a lot of you guys, especially the new guys, they see this page and they think, okay, I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna max everything out. So their next step they would go to is they would go to this peak torque table. Do not touch this. Like, you don't ever really need to touch this. Like, I've got some big power vehicles that, I mean, sometimes you gotta increase this lightly, but you only wanna increase peak torque. I'll, I'll show you what it is. So this is essentially a torque limiter. With this 5.3 truck, it's not gonna make anywhere near this torque. So we're completely fine. So the next one is gonna be your driver demand table. Now this is a big one. So what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about map A, B, and C. So map A, if you notice this axis up here, this is actually in kilometers per hour. No matter what your units are, this is kilometers per hour. And inside of this graph this is actually kilowatts. So if you notice at zero, how much less kilowatts the truck is asking for versus at 10 kilometers per hour, 20 kilometers per hour, 30 kilometers per hour. So what I have found that in the newer trucks, like 17 and 18 model trucks, GM actually did increase this. So what I like to do is I like to copy the higher parts of the table from a 2018. So let's go to compare, open compare. Let's go to my documents. I'm just gonna search 2018 Silverado. My L button on my keyboard is not working good. I'm in my new studio and I've got a nice Corsair keyboard, but apparently when I was messing around with it, somehow I messed up the L button and you can't just buy an L button. Anyway, so we're gonna go to compare. And if you notice right here in the blue, all the areas in the blue is where the 18 model is higher. So we can just go to all our blue stuff, we'll just enter zero, and we can do this all the way across. All right, so now that everything that was blue is now zeroed, we can actually close out this comparison file and we can actually open our comparison file and make our comparison file the same file that we're modifying. So if you notice how it says 2015 Silverado 53680 stock is our compare file also. So what we wanna do is we're gonna click show differences. And if you notice, this is how much we've increased our driver demand table. So what we can do is we can copy this and we can go to our map B. We can highlight it all and click add. And we can go down to Sport Toe Eco, highlight all, and click add. 
So now our driver demand table is much more burnout friendly. Now you guys can shape this table as you wish. Basically the way I modified it, it's, a, it's an OE style table, so we don't have to worry about reduced engine power. And we're gonna have good throttle response while maintaining good drivability. I don't really recommend it on a stock truck. I don't really recommend modifying it any more so than what I just showed you. The next one we're gonna do is this one's a table that a lot of guys don't understand. So what we're doing is we're looking under torque request rate limits. So one thing to note on Gen 5 stuff, anytime you see the word immediate, immediate is timing based because timing is the easiest and fastest thing to remove or add torque. If you see predicted, predicted is throttle body, it's airflow. So what we're gonna do is, is under increasing right here, you'll see predicted normal, and you will see that in these gears, there's actually a, this is basically a torque delta. So what we can do is if we want our throttle to be super responsive, we can just max this out just like what the factory did in the other gears. And in some, in some operating systems, this is actually maxed out, like not in the trucks, but in some operating systems it is. So we do that under predicted normal and under predicted tap shift. And what predicted tap is, it's the tap shift. It's your, when you're in the mode where you're using your touch up, touch down on your shifter, that's this, that's what this is controlling. All right, so the last thing we're gonna need to do under our driver demand table is in 2014 trucks, especially some 2015s, you'll see this torque shaping and it will actually be enabled from the factory. Just disable it. Basically what torque shaping is, basically like a learn feature for how you drive. There is no reason for these trucks to learn like our accelerator inputs, because if we want to drive like grandpa's for, you know, five days out of the week and then two days out of the week, we want to go do burnouts. We don't need the truck learning that habit, you know? So we'll just make sure this is disabled. And again, it's primarily 2014 Silverado and some of the 2015, like the GMC Denali's with the 6L80s, just it's, it's only in some of them, um, but just make sure this is always disabled. So now that we have our driver demand table set up, so we've done, taken care of torque management, we've taken care of driver demand, now we wanna work on power enrichment. So power enrichment is pretty simple on these. You go to fuel, you're gonna go to power enrichment, and then the first thing we're gonna do is they have an enable torque. So we can click this and you'll see that basically what this table is telling us is that the vehicle has to be at, producing at least 60% of its max available torque to go ahead on and bring in power enrichment. You can leave it like this if you would like. I personally zero this out. I like a TPS based power enrichment. I always have even in, in the gen three vehicles. So it's the same with this uh, minimum torque hysteresis. So this just go ahead on and zero it out. So then I go to the throttle and enable pedal. Um, and just like I showed you guys in gen three and gen four videos, I'll go ahead on and go over like 3000. I'll type in 60 and then right beside it, I'll do 50. 40 and then I'll just go 30. So that takes care of TPS based power enrichment. The next one, this one's kind of a topic that some guys are for it, some guys are against it. I don't know if you guys are aware, but direct injected vehicles, whenever you richen up the vehicle, you can actually cause like a fuel knock. So there's this knock enrichment table right here. And this table is only active in certain vehicles. I have never found an application where knock enrichment being active actually solved knock. I've seen this actually cause knock. So what I always do is I will go to this enable ECT and I'll just type in 493 because on a lot of the Corvettes, uh, LT4 cars, stuff like that, that's exactly what their settings is. So again, I try to duplicate factory settings anytime I possibly can. But realistically, that's going to be it for as far as doing burnouts goes. Now, I've already got out my Gen 5 6L80 video, so if you take what I just showed you guys and you match it up with the settings that I used in the 6L80 video, you've got a pretty much optimized stock tune to where you can still run 87 octane, you can still tow, you can still do all that stuff, but then you can also do burnouts. And if your motor mount's good and you're on good fuel, you can also have max power available. So anyways, guys, thanks for the likes, thanks for the comments, thanks for the subscriptions. I'll see you guys tomorrow.